it is June 30th and it's about 10 a.m. and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm in zone 6B and it has been a very hot weekend. So I actually had to pull my water hose up to the square foot garden yesterday and water it because we haven't had much rain and we're not having rain today either. So I watered everything real well at the base of my uh, plants. Everything is thriving great. The green beans are finding their way up the little arch here. The bush beans in the middle are just looking really good. Um, all the tomato plants are thriving. I actually need to tie them up again uh, probably today. Now over here I had a problem with the hornworm. Usually at first glance you can tell that you have a hornworm on your tomato plants if it looks like the leaves have been chewed off and the stems as well as you can see here also up here on this plant there are no leaves there and it looks like it's just been chewed off so um, I'll show you a picture of what the hornworm looks like and what you will do if you see your plant looking like it's been uh, chewed on is just examine the plant real well and look for your hornworm it's real big and um, I actually looked for it I didn't find it so I assumed a bird got it. Now the birds will eat the hornworms. If you find your hornworm and you see that it has little white cocoons on the back of the worm, that those are little wasp cocoons and it has been what's called parasitized and those cocoons will hatch and you'll have a lot more parasitic wasps in your garden which is a good thing. That's a good bug to help control bad bugs in your garden. So you could just cut off your stem that the hornworm is on because it has been parasitized it will die and just put it somewhere else um, like in a vase in your garden or something and let those cocoons hatch now if you find something like this in your soil that's the chrysalis for the hornworm and you don't want that so get rid of that because that's where you'll find them in your soil. You don't want it to turn into a moth which is going to lay eggs and create more hornworms in your garden. Okay? Alright, so over here, let's see, I pulled one of my big scallions yesterday to make some chicken pasta salad. I'll share that recipe with you guys very soon. It's delicious. Um, I pulled out all of my cabbage last night. They were looking great. So I have a lot of work to do. I gotta put up cabbage. I don't normally pull it all out at one time but it was about to bolt. So um, I will go back and plant carrots right here. I wanna put some nice carrots cause it gets a little bit of shade over here. So um, that'll be perfect for carrots. And the shiso is looking great. Just growing everywhere along with the tomato plant going right up the archway here. And remember these tomato plants are growing in six inches of soil. Underneath the six inches of soil, I have weed block. So the roots cannot go down any further. Okay, and I'll leave information on how to make a square foot garden if you're new to my channel. Okay, love using the square foot garden method. Oh, right here I had some potatoes. So I had one square of potatoes over here, and I went ahead and harvested those about uh, four days ago, and I ended up with one pound and 14 ounces of potatoes from that one square. So those were the little fingerling potatoes. And then carrots here in the middle. The peppers are starting to take off now. I have some that are already fruiting in the square foot garden. Here I pulled out all of my shallots yesterday and they look really great. They bulbed up real nice and that was because we just passed our summer solstice and that was our longest day of the year and that's when your bulbing vegetables will bulb up. So. Um, I was worried about them for a little while, but they just really just took off and started bobbing up once we had that real long day. And honeydew growing right out here into the pathway like I want it to. Also, this is the little French melon called Savor. First time growing it. I don't see fruit on it yet, but a lot of times with your melons, you get the male flowers first, and then will come the female flowers. Uh, cucumbers doing great. I have a lot of cucumbers right now I'm enjoying from my container garden. Um, more peppers and then the dill. I've been using this to make dill pickles. Been picking some dill heads here and there. And then of course the tomato plants. These are the red beef steak in the middle and 
They're setting for that one over there is called a, a Lindsay Ox Heart. Supposed to be a really meaty tomato. I've grown that before. Um, and then this is the Amish paste down in here. Really getting some fruit setting on all of my tomato plants. Like I said, I need to get out here and support them a little bit more and tie them up to the trellis. Okay. And the deal here is just beautiful. My beets are really looking great. I'll be enjoying those very soon. So anyway, that's the Square Foot Garden. If you have any questions about anything that I've shown you, please leave them down below the video, and I'll be more than happy to help you. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.